In this video, we're going to be looking at the heart and the cardiac cycle, which is one of the more difficult topics on AS Biology Unit 1. And in this, we're going to be looking at the structure, the role of the valves, and the heartbeat, and how that's maintained. So here's our lesson objectives. We're going to identify key structures of, of the mammalian heart. We're going to understand the passage of the blood through the heart and the role that the valves play. And we're going to understand how the sinoatrial node, that's the SAN, and the atrioventricular node, that's the AVN, maintain the cardiac cycle. Let's start. So, the function of the heart, first of all, we know from previous biology that it's a pump, isn't it? It moves stuff around the body, it moves blood around the body, but realistically, it's two pumps. As mammals, we've got a double circulatory system, which means the blood passes through the heart twice before it's completed a full lap of the body. So we've got two sides to the heart. We've got the right side, which deals with oxygen-less blood, so that's deoxygenated blood, that's typically drawn in blue. And then we've got the left side, that's um, dealing with oxygenated blood, or blood with oxygen. So, things about the heart that you need to know there's our heart in the middle of the page there. You need to know the blood vessels, the key blood vessels. So let's have a look. There are four that you need to know. There's the aorta, which is the biggest artery in the body with really thick muscular walls. And that's linked to the left-hand side of the heart. And I'll tell you where in a minute. We've also got the vena cava, which is the major vein of the body. And this is going to return deoxygenated blood to the right-hand side of the heart. We've got the pulmonary artery, which takes blood to the lungs. And we've also got the pulmonary vein, which takes blood from the lungs back to the heart. A common misconception is that arteries carry oxygenated blood and veins carry deoxygenated blood. It's not always the case. The pulmonary artery is going to carry deoxygenated blood and the pulmonary vein is going to carry oxygenated blood. So we say that arteries go away from the heart and veins return. This is the way to remember what each of those things does, what each of the blood vessels does. Arteries go away, so two A's there, and veins return. So the second letter is an E. Arteries away is probably easier to remember. So stick to it like that. So let's look at the chambers of the heart. On this diagram, the left atrium is here. It's quite small. In fact, the, the both atria are significantly smaller than the ventricles. So here's the left ventricle, that's the whole space below that. And the left ventricle um, has a really muscular wall because it needs to contract with a great deal of force to pump the blood around the body. Here's the right atrium, and here's the right ventricle. Now the right ventricle has quite a large volume, but its wall is much less muscular. So it only needs to pump the blood to the lungs, which is not that far away. It doesn't contract with a great deal of force. We also need to know about some valves. Now for the AQA specification, we can be quite easy. We can be quite simple, you know. So we can call the atrioventricular valves here on the left and here on the right. We can just call them AV valves. If you're feeling extra technical, the right AV valve is also known as the tricuspid valve and the left atrioventricular valve is also known as the bicuspid valve but for sake of simplicity I suggest learning them as AV valves. We've also got semilunar valves here and here and they, uh, they're the gateway between the ventricles and the arteries so semilunar valves between the ventricles and the arteries So how does blood throw, flow through the heart? Well, I'm going to illustrate the flow of blood with this pink dot. And we're going to start in the right atrium, which is here. So the blood's going to move from the right atrium through the right AV valve into the right ventricle. Then it's going to move out through that semilunar valve into the pulmonary artery, because we're going away from the heart. From here, we're going to go to the lungs. In the lungs, we're going to pick up oxygen and we're going to be returned to the heart 
um, down the pulmonary vein, which is here. From there, we're going to enter into the left side of the heart, so this time the left atrium. Then we're going to pass through the left AV valve into the left ventricle. And from there, we're going to pass out through that semilunar valve and we're going to go into the aorta. And the aorta is going to take the blood right the way around the body, where it's going to lose its oxygen, and it's going to end up back at the vena cava. From there, we go back into the right atrium, and hey look, we're back where we started. So this is a cycle that continues and continues and continues. So this is your order of blood vessels and body parts and um, chambers and whatnot. Obviously it's a cycle, so you can start at any point, and if you do it right, you'll get back to the same point again. Uh, I always like to start at the right atrium, just it's just the way I like to do it. So right atrium, then to the right ventricle, then to the pulmonary artery, to the lungs, to the pulmonary vein, then back into the left side of the heart, so left atrium, left ventricle, aorta, body, vena cava, and we repeat. So this is something that you do have to sit down and learn. You really need to know the order of the different chambers in the blood vessels. It can be tricky, but it's definitely worth spending time doing. So let's move on. Let's look at the valves, and what's the point of the valves? So valves are there to prevent backflow of blood. So we want to keep blood flowing in the correct direction, so we don't end up with any pockets of blood flowing the wrong way, or a system is inefficient. We want to make sure that our circulatory system is as efficient as it can be. So AV valves, that's the atrioventricular valves between the atrium and the ventricles, well, they're going to stop blood flowing back into the atria when the ventricles contract. The semilunar valves are going to stop blood flowing from the arteries back into the ventricles. So you can look at their position on the diagram and kind of work out which way the blood is supposed to be going and which way it's not supposed to be going. The thing is, it's all about pressure. So, blood wants to move from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. And when a chamber contracts, the pressure is going to increase massively. Because the volume is getting smaller, the pressure is going to go up. So, when the pressure increases in the chamber that's contracting, the blood's kind of got a choice. It can either move on to the next part of the heart, or it can go backwards, because both of those options are at lower pressure than the contracting chamber. Valves make sure the blood goes forwards, not backwards. So AV valves stop backflow from the ventricles to the atria, and the semilunar valves stop backflow from the arteries into the ventricles. So all the events that go on in the heart are brought together in this thing that we call the cardiac cycle. And this is the series of contractions um, that keep blood flowing in the correct way. And it's brought down into three stages. Again, it's a cycle, so we can start anywhere. I've chosen to start at cardiac diastole. We then go to atrial systole, which is ventricular diastole, and then on to ventricular systole, which is also atrial diastole. Now, these are some key words that you need to know. They're really just sciencey ways of saying contracting or relaxing. So diastole, that's relaxing. So in cardiac diastole, the entire heart is relaxed. In ventricular diastole, the ventricles are relaxed. In atrial diastole, the atria are relaxed. Systole is contracting. So in atrial systole, the atria are both contracting together. And in ventricular systole, the ventricles are both contracting together. Notice that both the atria and the ventricles will relax at the same time, but they'll never contract at the same time, because otherwise that would just be disastrous, and your heart just wouldn't work, would it? So let's have a look at these cycles, and these stages, sorry, in a bit more detail. So, on the right we've got a nice little diagram. Ignore the bit about the, the, the nodes for the time being, um, but we'll look at those separately. So this is diastole overall. So all chambers are relaxed. So the atria and the ventricles are both relaxed. And blood's going to enter at low pressure from the veins. So that's the pulmonary vein and the vena cava. So as that blood flows in, 
the pressure in the atria increases. Now, blood will flow from the atria to the ventricle through the AV valve without any contraction because the pressure in the atria has increased as the blood enters, it's going to start moving. The next stage is atrial systole, where the atria contract. Now, this starts roughly when the atria are maybe 50% 50 50 empty or less. Um, and this is to make sure that all, every last drop of blood is moved from the atria into the ventricles. So this causes the pressure in the ventricles to increase a little bit. And the effect of that is the AV valves are going to snap shut because what we don't want to happen is the ventricle blood or the ventricular blood, sorry, to flow back into the atria. That's the wrong way. So once the atria are fully empty, the pressure in the ventricles is now higher than in the atria. So blood wants to go backwards, but the AV valves snap shut to prevent that backflow. The next stage is ventricular systole, when the ventricles contract. So the AV valves are still snapped shut so that when the ventricles contract, the blood doesn't go the wrong way. But the ventricles are going to contract from the bottom of the heart, that's the apex, upwards. This increases the pressure in the ventricles above the pressure in the arteries. That's the pulmonary artery and the aorta. Now because of that pressure change, blood can flow out through the semilunar valves, but the AV valves still remain shut. The semilunar valves open, as we've already said, and the blood leaves. Sorry, lost myself in the bullet points there. Never mind. Okay, let's crack on. Final, final stage. Let's look at the whole cycle, really. So here we go. So we're starting on the left, and that's cardiac diastole, where everything's relaxed. Blood's entering into the atria and trickling through into the ventricles. The atria contract in the next step, that's atrial systole, which empties all of the blood out of the atria and into the ventricles. The final stage is ventricular systole, when the blood is forced out through the semilunar valves and through the arteries. Now remember that when the pressure in the ventricles is higher than the atria, those AV valves are going to snap shut to prevent backflow. So key thing that examiners love to test you on is the pressure graph. And this is a horrible looking piece of, uh, piece of graphiness. So what we're looking at is the pressure changes in the left side of the heart, only the left side. And what we're seeing is that yellowy line at the bottom, or at the bottom of the graph part, well that's the pressure in the atria. And the atria is really easily identified because it doesn't go through many pressure changes. And those pressure changes are really small. The green line represents the pressure in the left ventricle, which undergoes a huge pressure change during ventricular systole. The pressure in the aorta is the red line, and that's always pretty high. So, the key thing to identify here is when the valves open and when the valves close, and crucially, why. Basically, any time the lines cross, a valve is going to open or shut. So, let's look at the yellow line and the green line where it says AV valve closes. The AV valve closes when the ventricular pressure exceeds the atrial pressure, which is indicated in this diagram. The AV valve only reopens again when the ventricular pressure dips below the atrial pressure. So, AV valves close, AV valves open in that order. Now, if we look above to the top half of the graph, we're looking at where the semilunar valves come into play. Now, the semilunar valve opens when the ventricular pressure exceeds the pressure in the aorta. The, the semilunar valve is going to close when the ventricular pressure dips below the pressure in the aorta. It's all about following the pressures. Try to remember which way the blood wants to go and which way it should be going. You'll notice as well, on the bottom of this diagram, you know that text, on the bottom of the diagram we've also got the lub and the dub, the heart sounds. And they're made by the sound of the valves snapping shut. 
So let's move on. We mentioned the nodes a little bit earlier, but I didn't really go into much detail. In your heart, you've got two main nodes, and they're responsible for keeping the cardiac cycle running correctly. Now, heart tissue is myogenic, which means it will contract, it will, it will make small muscular twitches of its own accord. The sinoatrial node acts as a pacemaker. It controls those twitches. It makes sure the heart is beating at a constant, regular rate. Now, that can be controlled by your brain if you need to increase your heart rate or decrease your heart rate. But generally, it's quite a good thing to have a heart that pretty much runs itself. So the sinoatrial node acts as a pacemaker, and we don't need to think about that. So the sinoatrial node gives out regular electrical signals. And the sinoatrial node on this diagram is the one with all the, the nice uh, radar lines coming out of it. It's in the top left on the diagram, which is the top of the right atrium. So those regular electrical electrical signals, they're going to cause the atria to contract. So that's what starts the contraction of the atria. From there, the atrioventricular node comes into play. So that's the, the, the little blob on the diagram that's near the atrioventricular valve. And the role of that, valve, the role of that uh, node is to pass the electrical signal into the septum. That's the middle of the heart. And it passes it into these really well insulated fibres, into this bundle of stuff called the bundle of Hiss. And that's insulated, so the electrical signal can't get out. And it carries that signal towards the apex, that's the bottom of the heart. Now, the bundle of Hiss splits. And these things called, I'm, I'm really awful at this pronunciation, but Purkinje or Purkinje fibres, they spread up either side of the walls of the heart, or the walls of the ventricles more accurately. Now they're not insulated, so the electrical signal can get out and can cause the ventricles to contract from the bottom upwards. So it's causing the blood to be forced out from the bottom of the ventricles, out through the semilunar valves, and out to wherever it's going. So that's the ventricles contracting. Yep, good. Um, there is a slight delay, though, between the atria contracting and the ventricles contracting. And that's caused by the AVN. And what that allows to happen is the atria to fully empty before the ventricles contract. So we, it's, again, about maintaining an efficient system. So this is the summary. For some reason, I've forgotten to put the word summary at the top. But never mind, we'll deal with that. So the mammalian heart is a double pump, and it prevents the mixing of oxygen and deoxygenated blood. Valves are present to prevent backflow. And the sinoatrial node causes atria to contract. Then the atrioventricular node causes a delay before the ventricles contract. This is a really difficult subject, a really difficult topic. And it may take a couple of times through this video and through your other resources before you fully understand it. Thanks for watching. Like, comment and subscribe. Oh, there's the summary. Thank you.